As Sub-Saharan Africa strives to break the shackles of poverty, its population of nearly one billion people is hard at work. A 2014 report by the U.S. Department of Labor concluded that one out of five Sub-Saharan children are working under difficult, if not squalid, conditions. In a Skype interview from South Africa, the International Labor Organization's Alex Soho said poverty is the driving force behind child labor. They are poor, the, the income is low, they cannot afford uh, hiring adult labor, so they, they have to rely on, on the work you know, of their kids. Uh, this is true for, for farmers, this is true also for farm workers who have to take along with them you know, into the plantations, uh, in particular, the, 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 the whole family, you know, to um, complete the tax they, they have been assigned. For these children, daily life consists of more than just backbreaking labor. Hazardous, dangerous conditions are commonplace, not just on the farm where machinery meant to be run by adults poses threats to children and pesticides abound, but also in mining where conditions are sometimes abominable. Day after day, children stand in muddy creeks and rivers scouring the water for specks of gold dust. There are dangers everywhere. Machinery, man-sized or bigger rocks, hazardous chemicals, and waterborne diseases. Another sub-Saharan African industry dependent on child labor is cocoa, used in the production of chocolate. That U.S. Labor Department report said child labor is prevalent on cocoa plantations in Cameroon, Ghana, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. In two other nations, Ivory Coast and Nigeria, it's not only the children are working, they are being forced to work. What's worse, the use of children in the cocoa industry is increasing. A study by Tulane University found that the number of children working in the cocoa industry in 2013 and 2014 was 51 percent higher than five years earlier. The Tulane report said 1.4 million sub-Saharan African children were working in the cocoa industry in 2014. An organization representing the industry says families, not corporations, are mainly responsible for the growth of child labor. Dick Weatherill speaks for the International Cocoa Initiative. More than 99.5 percent of child labor that exists is taking place on the family farm and therefore the, the much more extreme and, and definitely concerning end of trafficking and kids working in indentured labor, um, that's less than 0.5 percent. It's still a phenomenon. It's still real, but it's principally driven by criminality. It is not driven by industry, corporate business practices. Anti-child labor activists in the United States are trying to use the courts to confront the chocolate industry. Lawsuits pending in California state courts against Hershey, Mars, and Nestle are asking for money for residents who bought chocolate. State law requires candy makers to declare on product packages that child slavery was involved in their making. The ILO's Alex Soho says working is an obstacle to a child's long-term economic advancement. This work deprives the child of education and obviously of the future because if the child cannot go to school the child cannot uh, uh, have a future at all and uh, this is why the measures taken by the ILO and other uh, partners you know to support national uh, 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 stakeholders focus on education Alex Soho and others say keeping kids in school and helping families pull themselves out of poverty are the keys to helping the people of Africa achieve the kind of growth they need to improve their position in the global marketplace. Jeffrey Young, VOA News.